Welcome to the news with NTTV. It's Friday, July 6th. Coming up in today's episode, family of Hathras stampede victims seek accountability. Assam flood worsens as death count reaches 52. Kerala police probe a medical exam paper sale online and labor sweeps UK election in landslide victory. First up, over 120 families are still trying to come to terms with the tragic reality of losing their loved ones in the horrific satsang stampede case in Hathras. Self-styled godman Narayan Sakar Hari, also known as Bhole Baba, headed a satsang that plouted all norms, misinformed the police about the number of attendees and had a lackadaisical arrangement with people complaining there was no food or enough air to even breathe in the crowd. The event, which police were told would house 80,000 people, was a massive gathering of 2.5 lakh people, witnesses said. Then as the ardent devotees allegedly ran after Narayan Sakar's car to collect the dust that touched the Baba's car, it sparked a stampede that would claim 120 lives. Six people have been arrested so far, including the organiser of the event. Witnesses alleged the Baba's Sevadar or private security people incited the stampede by pushing the crowd which was coming towards the road to collect the dust. The Baba is not named in the FIR and is allegedly missing since the incident happened. NDTV spoke with families of victims who had one pressing question. If Bholi Baba can perform miracles, why did he let this happen? And why hasn't he brought back his followers back to life? The Baba created a mythicism around him after he was released from jail in 1997. He was then charged with sexual assault and has accrued multiple sexual harassment allegations since then. After his release, the Baba who was known as Suraj Pal, when he was a constable in UP police in the 90s, would don the title of Narayan Sakar Hari and claim he had a direct line to God and amassed a massive following in some districts across UP, especially Manpuri, where his followers would attend all his satsang. Some would go to the length of selling their land to donate to Baba for good karma. Now the followers are left mourning their loved ones with calls for accountability. And next, the second wave of flood in Assam this year has claimed 52 lives so far since the first part of flood in May. The critical flood situation has impacted about 21.13 lakh people across 29 districts. According to the flood report of Assam State Disaster Management Authority, six people died in the last 24 hours alone in the state and the total death toll has risen to 52. More than 3.86 lakh people are taking shelter in 515 relief camps and distribution centres set up by the administration in 24 flood-hit districts. Morigao District Administration reported that 194 villages in the district are still submerged. However, Agriculture Minister Atul Bora told news agency ANI that the water level of the Brahmaputra River is receding in Morigao District, but the flood situation is still grim. Quote, As instructed by Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma, I came to Morigao to take stock of the flood situation. The situation is still grim and 28 districts of the state have been affected by this flood. Yesterday, we had a meeting of the state cabinet headed by the chief minister and he instructed us to visit the flood-affected districts, unquote, he said. The Assam State Disaster Management Authority said that 11,20,165 animals were also affected by the deluge. A total of 31 animals have died so far due to drowning, while 82 others have been rescued from floodwaters in the worst deluge in recent years inside the famous Kaziranga National Park, a park official said on Thursday. The flood's grim reality was evident in a viral video where a royal Bengal tiger was seen strolling across crop fields in Nagaon, and two people were rescued from the woods after a tiger attack. Forest officials said the tiger could have been forced out of the woods due to the flood and no food availability. And next... The Kerala Cyber Police registered a case on Thursday after an announcement was made on some social media platform that Foreign Medical Graduation Exam, or FMGE, question paper and answer key were up for sale. This comes on the heels of the massive NEET exam row which was marred with paper leak allegations 
that led to several arrests across three states. After completing MBBS studies abroad, those who wish to practice in India are required to pass the FMGE conducted by the National Board of Examinations. A state police spokesperson said that the city cyber crime police in Tiruvannathpuram have registered a case against groups that advertise the sale of question papers for the July 6 exam on Telegram groups. The case was registered under Public Examinations Prevention of Unfair Means Act 2024, making it the first case of its kind in the state to be registered under this law, the spokesperson said in a statement. As part of efforts to detect such frauds, the Cyber Division of the Police have started 24-7 cyber patrolling on social media platforms, including various Telegram channels, it added. Breaking from breaking news, horror movies about the dead are old. Now we will show movies to the dead. A cemetery in Thailand has left the internet shock by holding movie screenings for the dead. According to the South China Morning Post, the cemetery authorities carefully set out rows of empty chairs and screened a film for the dead in a bid to pacify the spirits of those who have passed over to the afterlife. According to the report, the cemetery has mostly Chinese descendants. Apart from the movie shows in the first week of June, the staff also laid out a feast for the dead, burning paper offerings such as food, model houses, vehicles, clothing and daily necessities. The staff told local media it was their way of honouring the dead by giving them modern entertainment. Now back to news. The Labour Party has said the UK general election 2024, ending 12 years of conservative reign. Labour won 412 seats in the 650-seat parliament, with three more seats left to be declared at the time of this recording, guaranteeing the centre-left party a whopping majority after 14 years in the opposition. The Keir Starmer-led left-leaning party has almost reached its 1997 landslide victory under the leadership of former Prime Minister Tony Blair. As soon as the Labour's crossed the majority mark of 326 in the 650-seat British House of Commons, the outgoing Prime Minister Rishi Sunak held a press conference to concede defeat and accept the sobering verdict. He also apologised for the loss. Quote, I'm sorry, I have given the job my all, but the voters have sent a clear signal that the government of the United Kingdom must change. Unquote, he said. How a Conservative MP Joe Johnson blasted the outgoing Prime Minister for this loss. Speaking with NDTV, he said this was the worst election campaign in the entire political history of the United Kingdom. On the opposite end, British journalist Andrew Whitefield told NDTV this was a colossal majority that can happen only very rarely. In his first speech after winning the majority, Mark Keir Starmer said Britons voted for a changed Labour Party. Just like the superhero in comics, he said, with great power comes great responsibility. He also said the Conservatives' failure were too many to overcome. Meanwhile, Rishi Sunak is likely to step down as Conservative leader after election defeat. He faced many challenges, including protests against the increased cost of living, nurses, doctors and patients struggling under the reportedly failing NHS, his anti-immigration stance and support for Israel in the war against Gaza alienated many younger people. In last-ditch attempts to prove the poll predictions wrong, Sunak tried to pander to a right-wing fan base by taking on a public social media stand against the trans community and slamming Doctor Who actor David Tennant, who was advocating for trans rights for his trans child. Meanwhile, Starmer has promised to bring change. According to BBC, his pre-poll speeches included premises like clamping down on tax avoidance shortening NHS patient waiting lists and recruiting more teachers and neighbourhood police officers. He also wants to negotiate a better deal with the European Union given the catastrophic economic consequences of United Kingdom's Brexit, a key moment in the history of Conservatives who faced their worst defeat in centuries this year. And lastly, Europe's electricity grid is setting records for lowering its carbon footprint. According to new data, 74% of electricity produced in the EU in the first half of 2024 came from renewable and low-carbon energy sources, 
a significant change on the 68% share in 2023. The data was collected by Euroelectric, which represents Europe's electricity industry. The firm's general secretary, Christian Rubin, said, and I quote, The pace of change is impressive. These figures document the decarbonization efforts of electricity companies are years ahead of any other sector, unquote. Euroelectric attributed the figures to an unprecedented influx of renewables on the grid combined with the stabilization of nuclear feed. That's all for today. You were listening to the News with NDTV, your daily newspaper and TV bulletin wrapped in a compact podcast. If you want to catch up with the day's events in a hurry, do remember to subscribe to the News with NDTV on Apple, Spotify and the NDTV News app. This is your host Anvithi, signing off.